Hello lovelies, this is Andrea Theo John, and this is a brand new channel. So this is all about Silky Maltese and the Silky Malty puppies that we are raising and that whole journey, but it's also about toy breeds and what it's like being a first time breeder. There's a lot to that world. We will discuss that in another video. But in this particular video, we have a lot to share about what it's like having a pregnant dog a lot of people don't talk about it because we live in if you live in the u.s we're in a country that believes in spaying and neutering so it's almost really taboo to even have a pregnant dog and even when you have a pregnant dog a lot of vets don't necessarily even know how to deal with it because they're so used to the spay neuter mantra you know preaching that all the time that they hardly ever focus on pregnancy and so what happens when you have a pregnant dog particularly a toy breed We'll talk about that and what that was like for Millie, our dam as they call it, and what that whole process was like for her. And we'll also talk about prepping for her whelping as they call it, which is labor and delivery in the dog breeding world, whelping. And so we'll talk about prepping for that, getting her area ready, all that good stuff. There's a whole lot, okay? So I'm just sharing everything I've learned so far and passing that on to you in case that helps you in your journey. And just if you're curious about what we did with our own puppies, it's a great way to check it out. All right, uh, oh, before we get into this, let me tell you how to reach us. So you can check out everything about the puppies at Silky Malty, that's Silky Malty, M-A-L-T-I, like a malt shake, <laughs> but with the I on the end, Silky Malty, S-I-L-K-Y-M-A-L-T-I.com. Okay, silkymalty.com. You can also follow the story of the puppies and their parents, as we call them, parents, get it? <laughs> like a paw, so cute. <laughs> At the silkiest Millie. That's the, T-H-E, silkiest, silkiest Millie. M-I-L-L-I-E, the silkiest Millie on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, that's how you can reach us. All right, let's get into this. Okay, first let me tell you the story behind how this all happened in the first place. Because a lot of people asked us, did you do that on purpose? That meaning let your dog get pregnant. Was it an accident? Weigh it one way or the other. People kind of view it as a sin either way, especially in the US. Either way, uh, I'll tell you how and why we just now this all happened in the first place. So we got Millie a couple years back now, and when we got her, she was not inexpensive. She's a Silky Terrier, and I wanna say, we could talk about pricing here. We couldn't talk about pricing on Facebook, so hopefully the YouTube gods are okay with pricing. But to be quite honest, we paid 7K for Millie, and true, it was in the height of the pandemic. Did we get her because of the pandemic? No, because I've been thinking about a dog for quite some time. Again, because I'd had one before, and it had been a while and I think I was ready to get back into dog ownership, especially now that I was about to get married and all that good stuff. So in prep for getting into our new home and all that, it was just a good time to think about a dog again. And so uh, that's how getting her in the first place ever happened. And so she was not, again, not an expensive dog. Does price play a factor in all of this? For my husband, it did. So uh, when we got her, he was like, we are, truth be told, this is a, this is a thought process a lot of people do have, and a lot of people get a lot of flack for the thought process too. It is what it is. So he said, okay, well, we should breed her, like we should have some puppies to try to make some of that money back, because it is rather expensive. There's not a lot of people willing to pay 7K for a dog. There's just not a lot of people willing to do that. And we just were, 
<laughs> we just were granted okay there's so much to dogs and world so puppy store we walked to a puppy store one summer i didn't know we were going to a puppy store we were just off of a dinner date it was still daylight you know how it stays daylight for so long in the summer and now it's fall right now currently <laughs> it's this big old oversized sweater but we were just off of a summer dinner date and i was like don't you potentially want to go somewhere else it felt too early to go home and so my hubby thought about it. my my then future hubby he was my fiance thought about it and he didn't tell me where we were going he just started driving and 20 minutes later we ended up at a pet store and he didn't tell me what we were there for I assumed we were there potentially to get a puppy because we talked about it so in his thoughts were we're just there to play it's a cute play thing play date you know go play with the puppy it's fun and leave that's what he was thinking but he didn't communicate that and I found Millie and fell in love with her and had to have her did not care the cost so I kid you not he and I sat in that store forever for hours debating whether or not we should get that dog at that price and I just wore him down and promised the world <laughs> Eventually, he said yes after saying no. I kid you not, like 50,000 times he said no. And so I got Millie, the dog that I wanted. I just, again, had to have her, fell in love with her, could not leave her there, right? And that's just how it happens with puppies a lot of times. So we took her home. For better or worse, you know, people are like, don't buy from puppy stores because they buy from puppy mills. And you don't know that 100% to be true all the time. You don't really know until you research where it came from. Either way, she's here she didn't ask to be here in this world but she's here and she's beautiful and we love her and she's now a part of our family and so fast forward we had that whole conversation about getting a companion dog we ended up getting a little maltese so it was a silky terrier and a maltese neither of them were spayed or neutered on purpose that was on purpose because we were planning to have puppies now granted i was the one doing all the research about breeding and having puppies and what all was involved and what all would it take I, i'm a research person i was researching it to death and <laughs> and so however when they actually did get pregnant i was not there and it, so basically it all happened long before i thought we should have the puppies however it's all good so <laughs> it happened when my hubby was home alone and i was coming home from a fall retreat and he mentioned that they were tied. Dogs get tied when they have sex. And he mentioned they got tied and he didn't know about that, blah, 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 again, because he had been researching all this, I had. And so I told him about it and um, just kind of shook my head like, of course it would happen when I'm not there. Anyway, that's how it all happened, okay? So were we planning on it? Yes, were we planning on it at the time that it happened? Not necessarily, however, it all works out in good timing because because of when it happened, which was the end of August, beginning of September, and dogs have a 63-day gestational cycle, very short, very short. I mean, you blink and there are puppies there. <laughs> that meant that their due date was supposed to be November 4th. And I'll tell you in the next video about how they actually came early and what happened there, but that's a very short time frame. So in any case, I'm going to spare you all the details about everything we had to do to prepare for that. What I want to concentrate on in this video is prepping for her pregnancy and her labor or whelping. Okay, so I know that was a whole lot of backstory, but I had to fill you in on all of it because there's a lot. Okay, there's a lot. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that we had to deal with was who could take care of her because we we're on a mission to get to Barcelona. This was our delayed honeymoon. We got married a year prior and we didn't go on our honeymoon just because the marriage alone, the wedding alone was so much. I mean, it was a ton of money and also it was still kind of COVID. So we didn't want to go anywhere where we felt super restricted and we wanted a little breathing space financially. So we were like, let's just do it next year. We'll do it for our, like our anniversary trip slash honeymoon so we this was a long trip in the making and it was coming right just before like maybe a weekish before Millie's due date and it made me so nervous to do that and we were scratching our head I was scratching my head literally thinking what can we do to keep this dog safe and you know I really was like we 
my first inclination was cancel the trip, like just move it if we can. But even though we technically could do that, and I know my husband, he was like, if we cancel it, we're never going to go on it because he just felt like anytime he's ever canceled a trip, he's never gone on it again. That could have been debated forever and ever and ever, but I understood his mentality about it. And rather than argue with him about it, I was like, fine, I get it. Thankfully, here's what we did. So if any of you ever find yourself in this situation, I pray that you are as lucky as we are because we were truly lucky, blessed and lucky. So the lady who walks Millie and uh, Fluffy, our other dog, Vanilli, it's Millie and Vanilli. <laughs> the lady who walks them sometimes happens to also have a friend whose dog she sits for sometimes and her friend breeds Yorkies. Silky Terriers are very close to Yorkshire Terriers, AKA Yorkies. And so what she did was she let us know, I told her we were looking for someone who ideally had experience with pregnant small dogs, which I thought would be like finding a needle in a haystack. I didn't think we could necessarily find someone. I was all, I was looking everywhere, whelping people, all of this, because I needed to know that she was 1000% safe and in good hands. She's already going to be in a different place, but she's very good with people. So I knew she would be adaptable. And as long as it was the right environment, she could feel safe and comfortable and the babies would be good. Thankfully, thankfully, this lady was a lifesaver and she'd watched her friend's pregnant Yorkie before for weeks at a time, long, long lengths of time at a time. And so that was just a godsend. If it were not for her, I don't think we could have gone on that trip. We would have had to cancel for sure. And that would have wrecked all kinds of havoc in our marriage. <laughs> so, so because of her, we were able to, she, and we talked at length about her care, how to feed her, what we wanted her to be fed, what I wanted her to be fed, what she likes, doesn't like, her vet information, emergency information, all that given to the lady. Again, a godsend angel. And thankfully, she knew how I would feel about it all. And so she was sending constant updates all the time, video of her, pictures of her, whether or not she ate, all that kind of good stuff. And she did such a great job. I mean, it was beautiful. Okay, so thankfully, it all worked out. And we were able to go on our trip with updates on Millie. And when we came back, we were just in time before her actual whelping period. Okay. So we were rushing, rushing, rushing to get everything ready. A lot of stuff we kind of already had in the works, but getting off of that trip, I knew we had to whip up her room and area where she could be at to do her whelping, i.e. labor and delivery and all that good stuff. The only place in this house that I knew that we could put her was in the kitchen area, kind of like a bay window area, which I'll show you because this house is so, so old and there's so many renovation projects happening in it right now. Literally, that's the only room that's not filled with a project or other stuff and had the space to accommodate the babies. I call them babies because they're babies, the puppies. And so that's the only space we had. And so we had to make that work. And I think if I do say so myself, I think we did a really great job. I think we did a really great job. So we painted, did a reface of the room just so it felt fresh and pretty and beautiful. Also because, you know, to be honest, you gotta take pictures of these puppies, they need videos. So the space needed to be lovely and shootable and all that photographable, videographable, all of that. So we painted the bay window area. I did, I say we. <laughs> I did a lot of this. The hubby helped with a couple of things. He hung the drapes. So we got some thermal curtains because the bay window is big. It's winter time. So it's beautiful, but you can lose a lot of heat through there. And puppies cannot regulate their own temperature for like the first two weeks plus of their life. They can't regulate their own temperature. So I wanted thermal curtains up there just to block out that winter cold and just to make sure that space was as room temperature tight as possible. So thermal curtains went up. He helped hang those and new flooring went down. Just simple. We're doing a heavy, a real overhaul on that kitchen later. But for now, we just did little vinyl stickers just to clear the floor and make sure the floor could be pristine, germ-free as much as possible. So I laid down all that, all that little vinyl with stickers myself and it looked good. Honestly, you know, for the money and the sweat equity put in, 
I'm pretty proud of that project. I think I did a pretty good job. So the floor I went in and my idea was to do a little kiddie pool because I've seen a lot of other breeders do this. We got a little kiddie pool because Millie's a small dog anyway. The puppies would be small at first anyway. And so tiny little kiddie pool, little whelping pads put in there that are washable. And that was a setup. Okay, so, and with that, there's a couple of other things you gotta have. So the whelping pool was there. We got towels, dishcloths, rags, all old stuff, old towels that we don't mind <laughs> using for labor and delivery, right? Clorox wipes. We also had a whelping kit ordered, but it didn't arrive in time because as you'll learn in the next video, they came early. So I'll tell you about in the next video, some substitutes for what goes into this whelping kit, but whelping kits typically come with like an aspirator, those little suction cup things for noses. So you can clear out the airways, nostrils, mouth, so that the baby puppies can breathe just like little baby humans you want them to you want to hear them crying you want to hear them making some noise so that we know their airways are clear they can breathe it's all good they're not dead very critical okay and so a thermometer was going to be in there as well just to check check mom's temp because the temperature of a mama dog drops as she is about to go into labor i.e whelping and so there's a thermometer typically in those um, kits there's also usually like some clamps for umbilical cords, which you honestly don't even need those now that I've been through this. Um, some people say you can use dental floss to tie it off, unwaxed dental floss ideally if you need to tie off an umbilical cord. But truthfully, Mama Dog does all that work. She chews it up, chews off the umbilical cord herself, the bleeding stops itself. And if you, if the bleeding's not stopping, you can just pinch it, hold it for, you know, like, couple seconds like 30 seconds or plus and eventually it'll stop bleeding and so that generally is what you do with umbilical cords however they have those little clamps you can put on an umbilical cord if you want to they would have been way too big for our puppies but it comes with that it comes with like some sterile wipes alcohol wipes things like that so and then some of the kits also have ID collars so that you can put a different color collar on the puppies so you can know which puppy was which. Another thing that you want to have on hand is a notebook to record time of birth and their weight at birth and also markings, any identifying markings, identifiable markings on the puppy. So you know, a notebook, pen, and a weighing station. So <laughs> I plan to use my little kitchen scale which worked perfectly and still does because they're tiny little puppies. I mean they're barely a pound-ish now. Some of them are two pounds at, at five weeks. They're now five weeks old. But, you know, little kitchen scale works great for our puppies. If you got a bigger breed dog, you're going to want a different kind of scale. But that worked fine for us. Am I forgetting anything? Oh, yes. Okay, so back to the whelping area. A couple other things you'll need is a heating lamp. Heating lamp is very, very important because as I told you, the puppies cannot regulate the temperature first couple weeks of life. They need a heat lamp, so that's great for the whelping area too. So as pups are coming out, they can sunbathe, as I call it, under that heat lamp and warm up while mom is working on other puppies. So sometimes they'll be nursing, but sometimes they'll just be under that lamp. You just want it there. Heat lamp, you will use it the whole time those puppies are there. Okay, so I skipped all the way to whelping and I forgot to talk to you about pregnancy. So actually, let's talk about like how we took care of Millie as a pregnant dog and with the help of our friend who also helped watch her while we were having to do our trip that was planned for over a year. So how do you take care of them? Nutrition is very, very important. So they should be eating their regular food up until it gets closer to their due date and then you want to switch them over to a puppy kibble because puppy kibbles have higher nutrition and higher calories and all that and mom needs all that she needs a different kind of nutrition as she's prepping for these puppies and as her milk is starting to come in and all that good stuff she just needs different food and her palate may change as well mine did she was like i'm not eating this stuff <laughs> She like, after a while, she was like, I'm just not going to eat this kibble. And so what can you do when they won't eat? A great thing that I learned from a guy named Alan, he's got a channel called Must Love Labs. One of his suggestions was to mix in broiled chicken, broiled chicken, heat it up with the nice chicken juices around, a chicken broth, 
so yummy it smells so good you know and then some rice just some white rice and mix that in with her kibble. So she's still getting the good nutrients of the kibble and now she's got the great nutrients of chicken and that yumminess of the hot, juicy chicken broth that's you know making that kibble soft and more palatable and lovely rice you know mixed in. It all tastes so yummy, right? And so she had that and she ate that all the time while she was with her caretaker and then when we got her back, we were feeding her that too. I think by then she kind of got tired of that even. And so there's some other stuff you can mix in, like some people give their dogs boiled eggs. I scramble mine for her because she ends up eating just the yolk and not the actual white of the egg. So I want her to have the protein associated with the egg too. So I would scramble her eggs. I mean, after a while, I was like fixing her a little omelet in the morning with like, I'm thinking I make myself an omelet and I make her an omelet and we would have an omelet together in the morning and it'd be eggs mixed with like bell pepper. She loves bell peppers and stuff like that, you know, so she loved that. She looked forward to it. I mean, she was eating like a little princess. Also, she had like a little multivitamin that she would eat and that little multivitamin sometimes she wanted it sometimes not so much so if she was having a problem eating that multivitamin sometimes which is just a little half multivitamin what we would do what i would do is dip it in a little peanut butter and give it to her like that and she would eat like that so peanut butter was also a fave treat at some point i was like starting to make her a puppy mush mix much like she'd be eating when the puppies were born and that was a mixture of her puppy kibble mixed with some hot water and then sometimes I'd throw in um, her peanut butter with it. So it's like a peanut butter. It's like a puppy shake. It's like a puppy shake. It's so yummy. <laughs> she loved it. So peanut butter in there. Sometimes I'll put in some, I think it's called fenugreek. I have to get it. I'll show you a picture of it here. Fenugreek, I believe it's called. It's like a herb that helps with lactation, I heard. So I put a little bit of that in there. It can't hurt. Also her calcium supplements. Once the babies were born, puppies, there's a calcium supplement I would stick in there as well just to make sure she got that in there just make sure she wasn't running low on calcium because that's very important too especially for tiny toy breed dogs they can get eclampsia or even before whelping they can get preeclampsia so it's very very important that they have that so sometimes I blend up a mixture like a puppy smoothie mixture for her and she would lap that up and love that so you just be creative and mix it up for her. Sometimes her palate is just like, eh, mom, I can't do any more of that. Totally get it. If I were ever pregnant, I'd probably be the same way. <laughs> Other foods we gave her were like turkey slices, steak, bits, any kind of protein like that, lean protein, hot. She loved it. So if you're, if you're struggling, think of proteins, lean proteins that you can give her. Fair game. Fair game as, I, as far as I think of it. <laughs> also... We had an ultrasound visit and an x-ray visit. So two of the things, the ultrasound is to actually, I'm going, walking backwards here of what we actually did. So the ultrasound happened first and that's to actually confirm that she is indeed pregnant and you even may see a couple of little sacs in there. So at the time our vet thought she saw three little sacs. So, you know, plus or minus one, she could have four. There's an x-ray that we do, which I still don't understand why it's fine for humans to have x-rays and not, no, it's not fine for pregnant humans to have x-rays, but it's fine for dog, pregnant dogs to have x-rays. I don't really understand that thinking. Nobody can really explain that to me. If any of you know, please put it in the comments. But in any case, you get an ultrasound earlier on to confirm she is indeed pregnant. She was. And then you get an x-ray later to just a little bit before she's actually well-being in, in days 50-ish, 53 I think maybe it was a day we had her done. And that's to check the actual count of the puppies. So you're actually looking at the skulls and spines. You can see and count a little more accurately by then how many you're going to have. It's very, very important because when you're actually having the puppies, you got to make sure every single puppy comes out that you know of. <laughs> And all the placentas for each one come out because if one stays in there, it can make mom sick and it can cause her to go downhill and she's going to need care fast. So that's why it's so important to get that x-ray so you can confirm as best as possible how many she has. So I told you in the ultrasound, we thought we were going to have three-ish puppies. In the x-ray, we confirmed it was actually five and we actually got all five puppies. That was the correct number. So 
it's very, very helpful to get, to get that x-ray and I'm glad that we got it and it was super usable, helpful. If any of you are wondering, should you get an x-ray? Should you have a pregnant dog? I think it's a great thing. All right, my dears. So I know that's a whole, whole lot. I shared a whole lot of backstory with you, but also some really great tips on how to prep for your own pup. And again, this is a very charged space. I realize that it's a very charged space breeding, deciding to have dogs, not neutering, not spaying. You're subject to a lot of judgment and criticism. I totally get that. I get all the arguments for and against it. Truthfully, I've argued both with my husband. <laughs> so trust me when I tell you, I understand the concerns. And there are just, there's just so much to know and so much to learn. I really thank a lot of the YouTubers who took the time to teach and share their own tips so openly about their breeding experiences. It helped me a bunch. I already mentioned Alan with Must Love Labs. There's a chick named Bailey, I believe her name is, who um, has Rose and Reed Doodles. She was so helpful. Golden Doodles of North Carolina, that lady, I really loved her channel. She was so helpful. There's a guy in Australia who has like a, oh, I'll have to put his name here for you. Um, the Australian guy also has a breeder, My Breeder Supply and I Love Pups or something. He was so helpful. I'll put all their info here and also in the comments below. People like that were so helpful to watch and learn from because again, here in the US, there's just not a lot of people who are having puppies on purpose and again, because it's so stigmatized and there's not a lot of people talking about it either. There's not a lot of people talking about it either for that reason. So for the people who took the time to share their experiences, thank you. Thank you 100%. Oh yes, and also, Al, I believe her name is Allison from Patha Palms Poodles and Pals. Whole mouthful, but it's fun to say Patha Palms Poodles and Pals. I love alliteration. I'm in marketing. <laughs> so. She actually reached out to me and was like, you can do an abortive spay. Totally understand her thinking. And I told her like, actually I had been doing a lot of research on this and felt pretty well prepared. And her channel was one of the ones I'd watched. So I thanked her for her information and everything she shared. Uh, just because it really does help. And there's some breeder groups on Facebook that also were generally helpful as well. So there's some people who are, who are you know, kind of snarky about people being new breeders. Totally get it, totally get it. Again, it's not for the faint of heart. Having puppies is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> yeah, I have thick skin. There's gonna be a lot of judgment and criticism. It, there just will be because people feel very strongly one way or the other about neutering, spaying, puppies, and should you adopt, don't shop, blah, 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 and all that. So again, I get it, I get it. Let me know your comments below. I'd love to hear it. Leave it in the comments. Also, be sure to follow us again at the Silkiest Millie. That's the puppy channel. And you can also check out the website, silkymalty.com. Currently at five weeks, this is gonna go so fast, but we already have one puppy reserved and a couple other are starting to get spoken for. So if you happen to be interested in our little puppies, let me know ASAP because by the time you watch this, they may or may not be available even. So again, I'm Andrew Thea John with Silky Malty. I hope you come back again. And next time we'll be talking all about toy breed labor and delivery. <laughs> There's so much, There's so much. I cannot wait to share it with you. All right, my cuties. See you later and have a pa thick day. <laughs>